Hello painters, I'm Debbie from acrylicpouring.com and I'm back today to try something which I've never tried before, which is always fun or potentially disastrous, but fun either way. So I thought that I would do a different type of dip painting. In the past I've done dips where I've had like excess paint on my surface and I've dipped tiles into them and made pretty designs. Or I've done what I call the butterfly technique, where I've put paint on one canvas, put the other on top and pulled them apart to make um, two near identical paintings. Today I'm just going to try and do it with one piece of canvas and a piece of plastic. This is an old Ziploc bag which I've just cut open to give me a larger piece and I thought I would try and make something that resembled kind of like a garden. So I've got garden colours today including greens which I don't normally use so let's see how we get on. And all I'm going to do is um, I think just layer them out, put the, cam put the plastic on and smush it about and we'll see what we get. But before we start, let's go through our colours. I'm using all Deco Art Americana colours today. This one is Sour Apple. Then I have this one, which is Festive Green. Then uh, a di Dioxazine Purple, which I've got mixed up in my squeezy bottle. Then this nice bright, bright sunny yellow. This one is primary yellow. And then this one, lovely, lovely blue color. This one is bluebird. And then just to be something a little bit different, not a color that I would usually pick. This one is bubblegum pink. And I've got some titanium white mixed up too because I'm thinking what I'm going to do is l outline all of my sections of colour with white. Maybe. Well, it's all or nothing, isn't it? So yes, let's do it. Let's do it with, with the white. So what I want to do is lie out some green at the bottom as if this were grass in my garden. So I've got a couple of colours of green and all of, oh, that one's a little bit thick. All of my paints are mixed. Um, with Floetrol. So I just keep my Floetrol in one of these and just strain it as needed. Strain it from the main um, main bottle into that squeezy bottle. And then I've just added Floetrol as needed to these paints. They've been sat here a little while so some of them are a little bit thick but I think that'll be fine. And um, because they're all reasonably um, pouring um, consistency already I haven't needed to add any water. So I'm just going to lay these out on the canvas and try and make something maybe that resembles a garden. Who knows what will happen. So I've got a lot more of this one. This is the sour apple. This is a bit more of a, a lighter green. And I'm thinking um, normally when I do this I put a lot of paint on the canvas for my dips because I need basically to cover two canvases. Um, but today I only need enough to cover one. So I think what I'm going to do is lie out the paints but with some space in between so that when I squish the plastic down on top I'm going to move them about and have hopefully have enough coverage for my canvas. But we will see. See already I forgot to put my white in between the colours. No. So let's put a little thin line of white here to separate what basically is my grass a little line in here too. Um, separate what's basically my grass from my garden and because I've got this blue I'm thinking maybe we should try and make that a little bit more of an abstract sky. So I'm going to put some of this up at the top. The pot's a bit full but we have to pour it out too much. There we go. And I'm definitely going to put some areas of white in with this so that it looks like clouds perhaps who knows what it will look like but let's say it looks like clouds so I'm going to put some white up here with my blue so that when these smush about maybe we'll get something that looks a bit like a sky and then in the center I basically want to have like a riot of blooms so I'm just going to be using the um, the other brighter colors that I've got the yellow the pink and the purple to make just kind of rounds of color um, and we'll splodge these about kind of randomly and we'll see what happens. 
I think it's kind of nice sometimes when you do an acrylic poured painting to feel like you have at least a little bit of control over your composition because of course a lot of the time we put things in a cup and we pour it or we flip it and how things come out can be a surprise. Often it's a good surprise but not all the time. Sometimes it's uh, not quite the kind of thing we were looking for. So this time it feels kind of nice to have, feel like at least I've got a little bit of control over where some of my colours are going today. There we go. I suppose I should make it a little bit more random so I haven't got all puddles at the same size. Some would be different sizes. So maybe I should start with a little bit of white in here now, just outlining some of these just slightly. I don't want a whole bunch of white. But in the um, the kind of dips, the um, butterfly technique paintings that I've done in the past, this looked kind of nice to have black or white um, in here and just sort of uh, breaking up some of the colours. And they, the white and the black also make some really nice cells when we smush it together too. So let's see. Oh, this doesn't want to come out. This is, oh, there we are. It's just a bit of a clog. Wow, this purple's very vibrant. Big, some big blobs in there. I think this is gonna look great with the white. One thing I've learned with this purple, it does tend to dry quite dark sometimes. So um, I don't tend to use it with black, or if I do, I forget, and then it doesn't come out quite as I'd hoped. Some there. What should I do in there? A bit more yellow in that gap. See, I said I was going to leave gaps. I didn't need to fill the whole thing in, didn't I? So I probably, oh, don't need to fill the whole thing in. Let's put a little bit of this nice bright green up here. Maybe we have some greenery in our garden as well. It doesn't have to be all flower colours. And I think that is it. So let me just pop these off to one side. Because it's almost a bit messy around the place, isn't it? There we go. Pop those off. And now what I want to do is put my plastic down and obviously it's good because I've got clear plastic so I can see what I'm doing and I want to put it on down and then kind of just smooth it out a little bit so I'm smushing the colours together um, and also just filling in a few of these gaps. So let's see if I can lay it very flat. Okay, I've got the whole thing covered. That's good. Ideally I should have had a, a slightly larger piece of plastic I think to give me some room to work with but kind of this was all I had so that was all you're going to get. And now I'm just going to gently smoosh these about through the plastic so that I'm encouraging my paints to mix together a little bit. And also where I didn't have it quite to the edge, I can see where that is now and smoosh the paint a little bit more to the edges. So that looks good. And let's smoosh these flowery bits kind of together and see what we get. We've got a bubble of air there. I have to push that off to one side. And as I get down here, again, I'm going to smush that green so that it comes right to the edge of the canvas. And there we go. So, so far so good. Oh, bad hair day. Right, so which way should I lift it? I'm thinking if it's intended to be an abstract garden, and this is the, gr the ground and that's the sky, I should probably lift it from the bottom up so that the paints kind of move towards the sky as I'm doing it. Let's see how I'm doing it at the top. I can see a little bit of my edges there, so I'm just gonna push a bit more of that blue up towards the edges. So, so far, it all looks very much the same, but I think underneath the plastic, the paint will have moved quite a lot, hopefully not too much. So let's go for the pull up and we'll see what we get. Oh wow. Now that has turned out better even than I might have hoped. That looks really, really nice. And I think I definitely made the right decision in terms of pulling the plastic up towards what I thought was gonna be the top of the painting. And it's created uh, movement in this direction. The clouds look good, the grass looks good. Wow, I am pleasantly surprised. Because sometimes, you know, when you do things for the first time, you have no idea how things are gonna come out. But actually, I really like it. So I'm just gonna lightly put my torch over, get rid of any bubbles that might be there. And 
it's also been a surprisingly clean project. I didn't get any paint on my hands at all, so that was nice. I'm going to have a bit of work though to clean up that plastic sheet. I may just let that dry and uh, throw it away. We'll see, see how I feel about that. Actually, that sheet probably looks quite nice. If I hadn't put it together, yeah, that looks really cool. That would make a really nice skin. So I think I'm going to dry this sheet up as well and uh, see what happens with that. Of course, I don't know whether the paint will be able to peel off that Ziploc bag or not, but if I let it dry, we will see what happens and I'll report back on that in the end. So everything's good. Let's bring you down and I'll show you some of the lovely details that we got in this dip. So now you can see the painting more from my point of view with the grass and everything at the bottom and then our kind of riot of colour and the sky with the clouds at the top. And I have to say, I really, really like this. It's turned out better than I hoped. The colors are all looking really good. I think the little bits of white in here just give it that little bit of extra dimension. Of course, the extra white up at the top really does look like clouds. If you look at some of the details, just the, the whole dipping technique, the way that the paints kind of smush together and then um, you lift the plastic up and it, it's almost like a, a little swipe, the way that the paints move over the top of each other and you can get some great cells. So even if you know you struggle with other aspects of acrylic pouring to get some cells, maybe you can try the dip method like I've just done with the plastic sheet. And you can see up at the top just here, you get some beautiful white lacing where the two colors have mixed. So maybe that's um, an option for you to try if you've been otherwise struggling to get some cells in your painting. And here's just a, a quick look of the sheet of plastic and I'll dry that off and we'll see what happens. So hang around and I'll show you what this one looks like when it's all dry. So here we are finished, dried and varnished. This is the painting and we'll look at that in a minute. And this is the, um, the plastic that I used, the Ziploc bag. Unfortunately, although I've dried it up, I've not been able to peel this off. I've tried, but the paint is just really, really thin and it just breaks up when I try and peel it. Um, and I guess a Ziploc bag is not the best thing if you want to, um, to save the skin and peel the paint off. So that one was a bust, that goes in the bin. However, the painting is lovely. I really, really like this effect. I'm definitely gonna be doing more dips. You know, the, the cells that you get from a dip, look at here up at the sky, it's just so cool. And the colors stay a lot more separate. Now I used a bit more paint on here than probably I should have. And this section here is a little bit more mixed than some of these other sections where the paint was a bit thicker. So if you are gonna do this dip method, you really don't need, if you're using a single canvas, you don't need to cover the whole canvas in, um, in paint. You can leave some gaps. And then when you put the plastic, you can smush the plastic about and that fills up those gaps. So this will be going off into my Etsy shop, unfortunately very soon and uh, leaving my home, I hope, to find a new home. But I hope you've enjoyed the video and I uh, hope to see you at acrylicpouring.com or in our Facebook chat group very soon. Thanks for watching.